Good morning, brethren, sisters, saints, Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Good morning. It's still morning. It's uh, <coughs> 11.57 a.m. my time here, so it is still morning. <laughs> In Monday's video, I had made a mention about gospel, the gospel, that the word gospel, we generally, generally equate onto being good news, okay? Um, I, I, that was part of uh, Monday's video. That was what I think I started out with that about, you know, hey, we do, and we do. Generally, generally, we equate what is the gospel as good news. Good tidings or glad tidings, right? Okay? But see, even though, now, I just got to tell you, personally, I don't really see the error in equating to the gospel it being good news. I, I don't. Or glad or good tidings. I, I really don't. But, here's the thing. The gospel is the gospel. The gospel. The definitive article. Okay? And what is the gospel? We're talking about the actual word itself. Okay? Okay? Because you got devils out there who tell you that the gospel, the good news is just to believe and receive. Stupid idiots like the, you know, the Canadian talk show host and Elmer and uh, Tom and uh, that idiot Dave and Jack and all these guys. The gospel to these guys is just believe and receive. Well, that'd be good news if that were the truth, meaning that that is what Scripture equates as the gospel. It isn't. It isn't. Because the devils believe and tremble. What are you believing in? Who are you believing in? Jesus Christ? Which one? Which one? Okay, which one, sweetie pie? One and three? <laughs> Yeah, the one in the middle died for me, right? Uh, boy, here we go. But in Monday's video, I said, what did I say? That we equate, as I said in this video, we equate gospel as being good news. And like I said, I don't really find anything too wrong with that equation. But this is my standard. Okay, the authorized version of the scriptures, the perfect and errant given by inspiration word of God. And as I understand, even some of the Bibles take out the word gospel and put good news there. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me, word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures we are going to be considering today. Read along with me. Be a Berean. You know, you're supposed to stay and shoot thyself approved on the God there, genius. Okay? Uh, you're supposed to search the scriptures daily. What do these things be so? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Read along with me. Look at what we're reading. Hear what is being read. Okay? Listen. Okay? You gotta, you gotta read along with me too because I make mistakes. I'm not perfect. And I never claim to be. Okay? Unlike so many other people out there. Okay? I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I make big mistakes sometimes. Okay? So read along with me. Okay? And if you're looking for a man who is perfect, and unfortunately a lot of you equate that to a certain individual who's out northeast of me, <laughs> and he's, as I understand it, he's not rebuking any of you, but just kind of doing one of these things. Uh, yeah, count your pennies and cars, pal. Anyway, 
Good news. Good news. Proverbs 25. Now, in this video, we are going to have uh, several one-verse references, okay? And context is always the defining factor. So if you have a question about context at any, at any point in this video, here's what you do. You, you press pause on your laptop, your computer, or your cell phone, and, you know, if I hope you have one of these and are reading along, read the context on your own. Okay? See, and we're going to address this today. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And, the, and our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, has sent people, men, out to preach. Okay? God uses man for that purpose. Yes. And see, the spirits identify. God, Father, and me, through his word, will identify to you, saint, who God the Father dwells in also. Okay? That's how that works. All right? But, Proverbs 25, just one verse, 25. Here is where good news appears in Scripture. Here it is. As cold waters to a thirsty soul. Now, a thirsty soul, thirsting for salvation, thirsting for something better than yourself, thirsty. Like this, my, my wife got me this. Uh, thirsty, you know? Uh, as cold waters, and out of your belly shall flow living waters. Okay? As cold waters to a thirsty soul. See, the soul that has been broken. You who are broken, contrite, and have the hell scared out of you. You, in that moment, when the realization, I'm going to hell. I'm going to have to give an account. You, oh... No. I can't blame so-and-so. I can't say if you know what I've been through, you would do the same. No, I wouldn't. Shut up. When you get to that moment, you can't wait. Lord, save me. But see, yea, hath God said, comes along. You don't need to do that. Just make a mental decision as if you're cl uh, flipping a switch. Or, you want a cookie? And I'm sure there's high fructose corn syrup in that little wafer god of theirs. And who knows if it's real wine. Or hey, check the color of your skin, huh? Hey, hey, or hey, hey, you gotta, you gotta be to the phallus house every Sunday. Anti, to be against and to replace. As cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Now, you know, you can tie in, in Hebrews, he seeketh for a better country, a heavenly. Okay, you can, you can make that. We're not going to make that in this verse, but we just looked at this merely because... As far as I could find, if any of you elsewhere can find it, put it in the comment section. Hey, sweetie pie, you know, I haven't blocked you. Okay, I will if you come around starting trouble. Okay, sweetie pie, okay, you, you can run your big mouth and you watch what you say or else I will. But hey, good news, as far as I could find, this is the only occurrence of good News and scripture. Now, the tie-ins that we could go through with, you know, like we just did. Thirsty soul, what are you thirsty for? More flesh there, antinomianist? Or I did the cookie, or I'm black, therefore I'm a Hebrew. <laughs> uh, 
my, my dear Hemetic brethren we have, who are saved, we have the same Father. Okay? Those of your kindred who claim that they are special because of the color of their skin, uh, they're crazy. And you Hemetic brethren and sisters, you know that. You know that. I'm not saying anything to you. You don't know. Okay? But what are you thirsting for? So is good news from a far country. Now, we could tie in all kinds of stuff with that verse. But the verse itself, the verse itself, verbatim, does not have gospel equated to. Now, the tie-ins, of course. See, that, see, that's something these guys don't do. Scripture with Scripture. We're going to hit this hard, okay? And I hope you get offended. I really do. And search the Scriptures. What are these things we saw? But, in and of itself, the verse itself, like I said, you can make all kinds of tie-ins. Yes, you can. That's a beautiful for, verse for that. But in and of itself, just leaving it by itself, there is no mingling with gospel in it. Okay? There isn't. Um, comparing scripture with scripture, which the devils don't do. These, these idiot free grace people don't do that. The Catholics, they're... <laughs> they, woo okay, they, they don't even read their Bible, the uh, catechism, okay? And most of them don't. And those who do, they're, they're dangerous. There's nothing worse than a Catholic who thinks they know something about Scripture. That's scary. That's scary. But, good news itself right there, by itself, doesn't equate with the gospel, does it? You're looking at it. Again, the tie-ins, we could go off on all day. But now, go to Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. Verses 26 on to 29. Who hath declared from the beginning that we may know, and before time, that we may say, He is righteous? Yea, there is none that sheweth. <laughs> there are some. There are some saints. The past two days, our dear beloved brother Alexander B. Hartley, the Lord has given him some gems. And there is another who slowly, <laughs> who slowly making them steps. Slowly. Sooner or later. But there are other saints out there that, that, that I don't know about and you don't know about. How do you know? Because you don't know. <laughs> but there are, okay? But, all right. Who have declared from the beginning that we may know, and before time, that we may say he is righteous. Yea, there is none that sheweth. Yea, there is none that declareth. Yea, there is none that heareth your words. And amongst Christianity and amongst all the religions of the world and the people who don't want to hear the truth today. Okay? The first shall say to Zion, Behold, behold them. And I will give to Jerusalem one that bringeth good tidings. For behold, for I beheld, and there was no man, even among them, and there was no counselor that when I asked of them could answer a word. There you go with Christianity. Well, the oldest and best, you know, the church, <laughs> the church fathers. <laughs> oh, woo! <-hoo. laughs> okay, hey, my fathers, I'll tell you what, boy. <laughs> Behold, man, men, Calvinism, Lutheran, German Catholic, ism, Rockmanism, and any kind of ism, I is man, you want to throw in there. 
Behold, they are all vanity. Their works are nothing. Their molten images are wind and confusion. Molten something they made. Lift up Calvinism. Lift up Lutheranism. Why, I don't know. Lift up Ruckmanism. Okay, and any other ism you want to... I is man. <laughs> okay? Anything you want to put an ism on to, that lifts it up. But why don't we look at that? I think you've figured this out. Good tidings. Good tidings. Kind of like John the Baptist. But wait, I, I, Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52. <coughs> Excuse me. Isaiah 52. The verses 7 on to verse 8. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. Now we're going to see in Romans also, um, uh, Paul is also quoting this kind of, okay, I believe it's in Romans. Well, we're going to look at in the New Testament about this as well. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, peace with God. Not peace with sin, as the antinomianist free grace does. Okay? That bringeth good tidings of good, and there is none good but God. You're not God. That publisheth salvation. That saith unto Zion, thy God. What are we reading to? Verse 8. Thy God reigneth. Now, good tidings mingled with salvation the gospel salvation okay and see just believe and receive you saving yourself by your own that's that's not the gospel <laughs> hey you antinomianist jesuit twit that's not the gospel and you guys who are purporting this who are teaching this i believe you know that it makes it worse for you because you're serving the Vatican. But because it is an ecumenical doctrine. Okay, we've covered that. But thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing. For they shall, for they shall see eye to eye. When the Lord shall bring again Zion. Hmm. So we see in verse 7, good tidings. We see peace. Okay? Peace, salvation unto Zion, to the Jew first. Okay? So, good tidings mingled with peace and salvation. The devil, free grace, is like that jerk idiot, Dave, offers you peace with sin, like any free gracer does. <laughs> peace with sin and freedom. From the God who is. But hey, you guys, you Christians, want to believe that, go right ahead and try to justify that before the Lord at the great white throne of judgment. Have fun storming the castle, okay? Now, go to Luke. Go to Luke. Chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Okay, like I told you. Like I told you. Going to be having a bunch of one verse references. Here's what you do. See, you got to sometimes, brother, sister, yo, Christian, okay? Sometimes you got to get off your little duff and you got to go get this thing, the scriptures, and look for yourself. You, you, you really got to, okay? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. God ordained it by the foolishness of preaching. Who calls preaching foolish? The world, not us saints. Okay? Christians, not us saints. I've heard Christians uh, uh, say that preaching is violence to the hearer. Only a devil would say that to you. Okay? But yeah, okay, but see, here's the thing. My duty in this is to be like, okay, see that? Here, 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 here. I commend you to God. 
Okay, here, go here, 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 here. Oh, you found that too? Oh, awesome, Tell great. Here, 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 where? In scripture, you go now. Okay, you go now, okay? Now you're there, you go. That's what we in this position do. That's what we're supposed to do. Okay? That's right. It's like right here. This, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay, you're here. All you're doing is preaching scripture. <laughs> you know, I've been, people have said that to me. I've, I've said this to you before. And <laughs> I'm always I'm like, wow, you really are a devil, ain't you? <laughs> yes. Yes. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, not your feelings or philosophy. But, Luke 1, verse 19. And, the, and like I said, you got a question about the context? Here's what you do. Pause the video. This should be here unless YouTube takes down crazy things at absurd times. When you're least expecting it. <laughs> but, should be up for a little while. Hopefully, Lord willing, it's up to him. Check the context yourself. Okay? We got a point that we're getting across here right now. Okay? But uh, Luke 1, verse 19. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God. Oh, an angel being a messenger. Oh, Jiminy! <laughs> uh, the angel's video will be in the <laughs> uh, description box. Okay? And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to shew thee these glad tidings. We saw good tidings. Now we're seeing glad tidings. Luke 2. Luke 2. Verses 9 unto verse 11. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior with seven letters, which is Christ the Lord. Angel of the Lord. The angel video will be in the description box for you. Okay? And of course, what is this a fulfillment of prophecy in? Now, even you devils ought to know this one. But, you know, and saints, it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah. What is this a fulfillment of, fulfillment of, in part? Uh, Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. As we just read. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Right now, presently, God is in control of all things. Yes, he has given uh, the earth unto Satan for judgment's sake. Yes. Okay, but is he sitting in Jerusalem on a throne right now? No, he isn't. Okay, but let's continue. And his name shall be called Wonderful with a capital W. Counselor. Capital C. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. Jesus is God the Father. You wicked Trinitarian. I call I say wicked Trinitarian because if you don't, you know, you've been lied to by Catholicism. And we give grace to you Trinitarians who believe that lie. But if you're going to be indignant and obstinate about who God really is, and call saints who preach the true God, then you're wicked. Simple as that. Okay? Like I said, I don't got that much time left. I ain't pulling punches with you. Okay? Anyway. <clears throat> the Everlasting Father, capital F, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Is that right now today? At this very second? Uh, August, what is it? Uh, 9th, 2024? With Kamala Harris on the verge of being the first 
female <laughs> president of America? Eh, yeah, I think perhaps maybe no. Future? Yes. In part, unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment, oh boy, and with justice, from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Okay? Luke 8 now. Luke 8. Just one verse. Verse 1. And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and shewing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. Glad tidings, kingdom of God. Now we're going to touch on this today. Kingdom of heaven is always reference unto the physical, literal kingdom where our Lord Jesus Christ is going to rule and reign from Jerusalem on a throne for a thousand years. And during that period, it's going to be works only. Don't... Don't... Please, don't believe these stupid free gracers. They are lying to you. And when you actually search the scriptures, their heretical doctrine crumble like nothing. They, they, it's nothing. It's nothing. Their gospel is heresy. Their gospel is satanic. Okay? But glad tidings of the kingdom. Of the kingdom. Kingdom of God. What kingdom? Spiritual. There are places in scripture where kingdom of God could be a reference onto the physical kingdom. But remember I told you about context? What is context? You got a sandwich. Bread. Hey! Bread of life. You got bread. You got your meat, lettuce, and tomatoes, and mayonnaise. Don't forget the mayonnaise. Don't forget the mayonnaise. Good mayonnaise. Okay? And then you got bread. Context is the bread, the lettuce, tomato, the mayonnaise. There's the meat, and there's the bread. Okay? Context. Okay? Generally, usually, kingdom of God is a reference onto the spiritual. We'll explain in a minute. Acts chapter 13 now. Now, see, with this thought that we're going with here, glad tidings, good tidings, good news. Where is gospel? Where's gospel? Now, again, personally, the fact that Christ Jesus died buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood on the cross for the atonement of my sin because I was the one who put him on there. I held the hammer and the nail. I put the crown of thorns on his head. He died because of what I did. It's my fault. Okay? I did it. Okay? And guess what? I can't push a peanut up a hill to atone for myself. Only he can do that. And how do you do that? He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood on the cross. Okay? That's pretty simple. And see, here's the thing. I said, like we said on Monday, even though scripturally, verbatim, it's not there. Verbatim, it's not there. You're right. You're right. But I, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to put this at you. Isn't that some pretty good news? Isn't that? And there are those of you twits out, well, Brad, that's kind of morose. Oh, you haven't been broken. You still think you could save yourself by your own belief or eating a cookie or because you're black or you go to the church every Sunday and because the doors are open. Okay, you still, you haven't been broken, dude. See, Again, brokenness is a requirement that false Christianity doesn't like to talk about. Or what they, they do that, that, that ridiculous, stupid, 
Going from unbelief to belief is what repentance is. Well, it's a turning. The devils also believe and tremble. You ought to see these guys with their gymnastics trying to get around that verse. It's, it's quite entertaining. It really is. But Acts 13, not 15, Brad. Acts 13, verses 26 on to verse 33. Men and brethren. Now, what's significant about this? This is after the death, burial, and resurrection and the blood shed on the cross. Okay? It is. What does that mean? That's this dispensation which you and I are in, which is by His grace, unmerited, unwarranted favor, the greater blessing the lesser. Okay? That's a simplified definition of grace which these idiots don't know anything about. Okay? Grace to them is a license to sin. Okay? We've proved that. Anyway, men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God. That's significant. And, we, and we're going to touch on this, on this in a little bit. Okay? To you is this word of this salvation sent. The tidings. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew not him, knew him not, excuse me, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day. I like that because, okay, they didn't know the voice of the prophets. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, but yet they were reading it every day. Oh, or every Sabbath day, excuse me. Still, the point is, they're reading it, yet they don't hear the voice of the prophets. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Very interesting. That's how someone could read the scriptures every day and still be lost. Okay? Because it, it, it doesn't go from here down to here. They have filled them, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, Isaiah 53, and I believe they even, but not, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. But God raised him from the dead. That's pretty good news. Those are good and glad tidings, wouldn't you say? Because if that didn't happen, then we'd still be. Haven't you read? For, haven't you read the entirety of First Corinthians 15? There, devil. You have. That's why you ignore it to deceive people for your father, the devil. But God raised him from the dead, and he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people, and we declare unto you. Glad tidings. How that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same unto us their children, and that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Where's the word gospel in there? It isn't. But the context of it raised him from the dead. Death, burial, and resurrection. And of course the blood shed on the cross. That's, that's some pretty good news. That is. That, that dear friend, those are glad tidings. Because if it were left up to us, you know, like the Catholic who's got the Christ on the cross, it's still up to them. That's why they got to, you know, drink the wine. They got to have the cookie. They got to give their tithe to the phallus house and all that nonsense. They got to go tell a Jesuit priest the deepest, darkest things that only you and God ought to talk about. 
so they could use that as blackmail. Hey, the uh, the the church, the the priest, and the woman in the confession by Charles Chinickley or whatever his name was, telling how the Jesuits used uh, the confession, especially during World War II and stuff like that. How they do that? I, I don't think that's talked about in that book because Chinickley was obviously way before World War II. But anyway. Okay? So, glad tidings we see intermingled here with the death, burial, and resurrection. It doesn't say burial. Oh, you can, see, this, that's what these guys do. They strain in a net and they swallow the camel. They focus on, on one shot in the arm thing. And they make that one thing the be all end all while ignoring other scriptures. More on that in a minute. Now, gospel. Gospel. Now, the word gospel itself uh, appears over a hundred times in scripture. Okay? We're not obviously going to look at every occurrence. We don't need to. But first mention of gospel. First mention of gospel. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Just one verse. Okay? Matthew chapter 20, uh, excuse me. Matthew chapter 4, one verse. Verse 23. Here's the first appearance. Okay? And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. There's the first appearance of the word gospel. Note, gospel of the kingdom. Question. Where does this first appear? Matthew. <laughs> What's significant about that? You do a word search on the kingdom of heaven. Do it. Okay? Kingdom of heaven. Do the search. Kingdom of heaven only appears in the book of Matthew. Kingdom of heaven is always, without question, except for idiots, like the antinomianists and Catholics and stuff like that. They're, they're, they're stupid. You want to be willfully ignorant and stupidity. Okay? But kingdom of heaven is always a reference onto the actual, physical, literal kingdom that will be in Jerusalem. That's east. Okay? That's where our Lord Jesus Christ, when he comes back at his second coming with us, who go up at the redemption of the purchased possession, okay, that's where he's going to rule and reign for a thousand years during the kingdom of heaven, which is all works, okay? So, what well, does it say kingdom of heaven there? Keep, keep, keep reading there, sugar britches. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, the, these guys, Catholics and antinomianists, they, they, they cherry pick and ignore context. And all the while, you know, the sweetheart up there is like, oh, context is, you don't even know, dude. Okay, I don't know why I give you the respect I do, to be honest with you. I really don't. I'd like to see you be a brother, but I know that ain't going to happen. The impossible is possible with you, yes. But <laughs> you're not going to force that guy at gunpoint. Anyway, you're right. <laughs> Kingdom of heaven doesn't appear there. But see, here, here's the thing there, sweetheart. Keep reading. Keep reading. Oh, and by the way, this is follow this, what follows this. Matthew 5, 6, and 7, the Sermon on the Mount which is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. Not today. Not today. Okay? 
See, this, this is the thing with these guys, man. Kingdom of heaven isn't in that verse. It just says kingdom. You're right. Keep reading other scriptures. Scripture with scripture, you idiot. But see, no, they stop right there. Shot. One and done. That's it. That's it. That's a gospel. There's, we, we, got a, we got a whole book, pal. We got a whole book. Okay? There's more. Keep reading. But see, you people, that's labor. That takes effort on your part. That does. Much study is the weariness of the flesh. One of the smartest men ever on earth said that, King Solomon. It's interesting too on YouTube uh, where they, I saw a couple videos where they mentioned, you know, the smartest men ever. Now, a few have mentioned King Solomon, but the majority that I have seen never mentioned King Solomon or, or, um, or Paul. Uh, the one did mention Jesus Christ. And <laughs> And they put like Einstein, I think, under, uh, above. It's like, wow. And remember, Einstein was a Hebraic Jew. Okay. <laughs> but anyway. But anyway. Okay. See, you, you, there's more scripture. And that's what these guys do. They will focus in on the one thing that, and we're going to get to this, and say, well, it's not in that actual verse. So that means that what you're talking about isn't legit. Dude! Okay, you're right. It doesn't say the gospel of the kingdom of heaven in verse 23. You're right. But dude, keep reading! Come on, man! How, how stupid, how lazy do you gotta be to fall for something for, for like that? See, this is how these guys are getting away with it. You know, sweetie pie, you talk about it in context all the time, yet you never give it. <laughs> the reason why you devils don't expound, number one, you're lazy, and number two, you can't. You got that one Dave twerk trying to, but cussing all the way while he's doing it, and you people think he, you guys take that guy serious. I got no pity for you. Who's that one guy with the bad teeth and doing this all the time? That vain guy, his salad name, or his name is Salad or something like some weird. You know, got messed up teeth and whatever, you know, doing this. He, he's in love with that Dave guy. <laughs> it's like, guys, guys, how lazy are you? Now we're talking about spiritual laziness. And I'm getting ahead of myself. We're gonna we're gonna touch that on that a little bit later. Are you offended yet? I hope you are. I hope you are. Because, dude, you, you need to start reading this thing. Okay? Now, go to Matthew 9. Go to Matthew 9. Go to Matthew 9. I go to church. I eat the cookie. <laughs> I give. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then he will profess unto you, I never knew you. When all the time you're saying, Lord, Lord. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, 32 unto 35. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with the devil. Dumb means not being able to speak. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake, and the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. What are we reading to? Verse 35. Yes. But the Pharisees said, He casteth out devils through the prince of the devils. And Jesus went about all the cities and synagogues, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. It doesn't say kingdom of heaven in there. <laughs> Who says something like that? Who will pick at that particular and blow it up to make it a doctrine. Coadjutors for the Roman Catholic Church, lost people, devils, who want to justify sin. 
Yeah. Okay? Uh, Matthew 11. Matthew 11, verses 2 and verse 6. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and shoot John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. What are we reading to? Verse 6. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Now, right here we see what kind of, what is this? It says gospel. Preach to them. What gospel? Which one? It is not the death, burial, and resurrection. We're going to show you that again today. It was not. Because they didn't know about the death, burial, and resurrection until it happened. They weren't looking forward to the cross before it happened. They didn't know about the death, burial, and resurrection, even though they had it written down. They didn't know about it until it happened. Okay? So, when our Lord was first here, what was the gospel? The gospel of the kingdom of heaven. The glad tidings of the son of David ruling and reigning in Jerusalem. Kingdom of heaven. But what's the kingdom of God? The spiritual. The Jews needed to believe that Jesus was who he said he was. God the Father. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The son of David. King of Israel. King of kings. Lord of lords. The Mashiach. Christ, the son of David, right there. Before the death, burial, and resurrection, the spiritual aspect of that. See, they're like peas and carrots, okay? Jesus came preaching the kingdom of heaven, the physical, literal kingdom, with him as king unto the Hebraic Jews, the gospel of the kingdom. The kingdom of God, the other aspect of that is they had to believe that who he was is who he says he was. Okay? They didn't. Some did. But Jewry didn't. That's how that works. People, listen to me. They were not looking forward to the cross before it happened. They did not know about the death. Even, th even though, dude, it's written down for them. They didn't know about the death, burial, and resurrection before it happened. They didn't. So the faith in Christ before the death, burial, and resurrection was what? That he's the Mashiach, the son of David, king of the Jews, king of Israel, right there. That's what their faith was supposed to be in before. You gotta lightly divide the word of truth, son. If you don't, you're a Catholic. Period. If you don't, you're a free gracer. They say about rightly dividing the word of truth, they're stupid. They're idiots. They say that what changes is God's grace. If, do, do, please, listen. If God's grace wasn't in any dispensation, we wouldn't be here. Okay? Please. Please. Think a little about, a bit about that. Okay? They, they offer you a God who is not angry, who has no requirements. You do it yourself and go on your way and boast yourself. I'm saying because I just believe. Same with Catholicism. Same with uh, a lot of the Baptists. A lot of, the, of all of the Pentecostals. Okay? And so on and so forth. Okay? Come on, man. Come on. You're, 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 you're supposed to be the educated one anyway. I don't even have a good enough diploma, and you've got probably a lot of earned degrees, don't you? You at least got a good enough piece of paper, right? Come on. This ain't rocket science. <laughs> but see, you're professing yourselves wise. You become fools. That's the problem. Matthew 24 now. Matthew 24. 
Here's an interesting little tie in here. Matthew 24, verses 13 on to verse 14. Matthew 24 has nothing to do with us today. It doesn't. Prove it to you. Absolutely. Matthew 24, 13 on to verse 14. I've even heard some free gracers get this one right. I have. I have heard a few of them get this aspect of Matthew 24 right. I've heard them actually get this right. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom, what kingdom? The kingdom of heaven. For context, dude. Okay, you're right. It says, in this gospel of the kingdom, it doesn't say kingdom of heaven. Dude, keep reading. Keep reading. Okay? How, you know, dude, you, you, you're really quick and easy to go like this and, and watch all this stuff on your, your, your cell phone, your laptop, your computer, and swipe up and down and have the world shown to you in a moment of time. But when it comes to flipping a page, <laughs> that's too much work for you. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then, and then shall the end come. Today, in this dispensation, you and I as saints, we don't have to endure to the end to be saved for anything. See, we came to the end when we died to ourselves and we went the way of the cross broken, contrite, and having the hell scared out of us, we cried out, Lord, save me. He saved us and sealed us. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I've heard free grace idiots get this one right. You and I don't have to endure to the end to be saved. We don't. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You go the way of the cross, he saves you. You're once saved, always saved. Sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? All right? We don't have to endure to the end. Who does? The Hebraic Jews. During the time of Jacob's trouble, which Matthew 24 is about. It has nothing to do with us today in this dispensation. Instruction in righteousness? Absolutely. We are hearing rumors of wars and stuff like that. We are seeing earthquakes in diverse places. Yes, we are. But, okay, doctrinally, this is, has nothing to do with us doctrinally today. Matthew 23 is describing to you the spiritual climate before the redemption of the purchased possession. Which, <laughs> look at Christianity, look at religion in its whole. Look at the divided body of Christ, okay? With this joke. <laughs> Christianity and all its denominations, including the denomination of King James Bible believing Christianity, okay? Look at it. Matthew 23, Matthew 24, Tommy Jacob's Trouble, Second Coming, Matthew 25. Heaven. Okay? It, 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 it fits so nicely. But see, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Matthew 24 doctrinally has nothing to do with us today. Today. you got to rightly, rightly divide the word of truth will be for you in the... But see, you, that, that, then again, you know, that's over four hours worth of material and uh, verses of scripture for you. And much study is weariness to the flesh. Oh, but you'll sit in front of a television for eight to ten hours a day, but yet you can't spend even a half hour in the scriptures. Oh, you gay Christian. Oh, Christian. Why do you think these guys can throw you one thing of scripture you, and always in uh, Romans 3, ignoring verses 1 on to verse 18? They don't like that. Because, like our Lord, he, he puts his finger on that one thing. And Romans 1, 2, and 3, up to verse 18, does that. 
You know, even Elmer from New York called the Romans Road the Romans Road to Hell. That's where that guy's going anyway. Go figure. You know, a Richling night. Just like uh, the Canadian talk show host is. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Matthew 24 has nothing to do with us doctrinally. Um, Revelation 14. Revelation 14. Verses 6 on to verse 7. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him that made heaven and earth, the sea and the fountains of the earth, of the waters, excuse me, gospel, everlasting gospel. Um, the everlasting gospel that we have today it's not what is being preached during the time of Jacob's trouble. Because what, what happens after the time of Jacob's trouble? Christ comes down at his second coming with us who go up at the redemption of the prince's possession. And when he comes down, eh, everlasting kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Uh, once the Lord comes back, he ain't going anywhere. Okay? He, he's going to be here to stay. Okay? Everlasting. Okay? He's even going to make a new heaven and a new earth. But he ain't going nowhere. Okay? Once the Lord comes back, he's back. He's back. Okay? So, here it is. Today, by grace through faith. By his grace through our faith. Okay? <clears throat> to many of you heretics. Alright? The redemption of the purchased possession. Come up with him. Okay? The time of Jacob's trouble. Time of Jacob. Israel. The Hebraic Jews. Not Hamites or Japhethites. And not even the Shemites of Japan, China, Korea, Thailand. Not even them. No. The Hebraic Jews that came out of Shem. Okay? Seven years. Body of Christ is not on the earth. How does that dispensation come to an end? Jesus comes back with us who went up. He comes back and establishes the kingdom of heaven. So before that, the everlasting gospel, the kingdom of heaven is going to be everlasting. He ain't going nowhere. He ain't going nowhere. What happens is Satan is bound for a thousand years. Then he is let loose. Then he's cast away into the lake of fire. Sin is gone then eternity without sin, the seventh and final dispensation begins. Okay? This is simple stuff. But see, the devils are deceiving you, and you want to be deceived. You want to be deceived. You know why? Because it, 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 takes, it takes a little work. Uh, Hebrews 4, while we're touching on this, and the book of Hebrews. Book of Hebrews. Who's the book of Hebrews written to? Hebrews. Well, who are the Hebrews? Oh, the, the Hamites. No. The British. <laughs> God forbid. No. The Japanese. Because, hey, you bad. They, uh, the Japanese, the Asiatics, yes. They are, they are Shemites, yes. Just like the American Indian is. Okay? Yeah. They're Shemites of Shem. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay, sure. But see, from Shem came Abraham. And God called Abraham out of Shem. Is it not evident, evident that our Lord sprang from Judah? So the Hebraic people have their root in Shem. Do I need to put what is a Jew for you? I should, shouldn't I? Yeah, in the description box. What is a Jew. Okay? That's a two-part video. I encourage you to watch that. Okay? But Hebrews. Hebrews, just like the book of James, is written for the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. And we see in Hebrews 4, verses 1 and verse 2, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached. Who's the us there? 
Hebrews, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. We're going to look at that today, by the way. Okay? As well as unto them. Who's them? Us Gentiles. Okay? Those who are not Hebraic Jews, including those of Shem. Okay? But the word preached did not profit them, being mixed with faith in them that heard it, making reference unto the Hebraic Jews who rejected the gospel. Okay? Okay? This, this, is, this is simple stuff. Okay? Now, Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Okay? Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, verses 14 on to verse 15. Now, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Now, we had already read, Blessed is he who is not offended in me. The Hebraic Jews who handed Jesus over to Rome, they were offended that Jesus was claiming to be their Mashiach. They were expecting, you know, Jesus rode in on an ass, you know, and the Hosanna to the highest, okay? The king rode into Jerusalem. They were expecting a guy on a white horse with a sword, like that man of sin, the son of perdition, will emulate and to deceive when he is uh, revealed to the world after we get brought up hither. You read about that in Revelation chapter 6. He gets uh, let loose after we get caught up. Oh, that's right. Uh, Book of Revelation is in the crowd. Oh, that's not funny. Oh, oh. Oh, count your, count your pennies in your cars, pal. God bless you. You're good. God bless you, right? Anyway. Anyway. The gospel of the kingdom of God. Now, look what he says. And saying, the time is come, is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now, he was there offering the physical, literal uh, kingdom of heaven unto the Hebraic Jews. But see, what we see is, like, look for yourself. Only in the book of Matthew does kingdom of heaven appear. Anywhere else, it's kingdom of God. See, Jesus, when he first came here, Offering the actual physical little kingdom of heaven with him as king on the throne. The Hebraic Jews needed to accept what he was saying that he is the son of David. Spiritual kingdom of God. Believe the gospel. Good news of the kingdom of heaven. You know, good news of glad tidings, I should say. And glad tidings, there's... There's the Mashiach. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. There's the son of David. Have mercy on me. There were those Hebraic Jews who believed on him. But Jewry in its entirety didn't. Okay? That's simple. That's simple. They weren't... They weren't believing on the death, burial, and resurrection because they didn't know about it. Even though they had it written down. They didn't know about it. Until it happened. Okay? They weren't looking forward to the cross in, um, in the Garden of Eden and the patriarchs under the law. They weren't. They didn't know about it. Until it happened. Okay? Uh, Mark 16. Okay? Now, we have videos on the channel, basically in the charismatic thing, because they are the ones who really like to distort Mark 16. Um, I believe it's the tongues video or the baptism video, um, but we, we cover this in several videos, okay? Mark 16, uh, verses 15 on 18. And he said unto them, now, this is after the death, burial, and resurrection. The blood was shed. This was, this is, this current dispensation that you and I, right now, October 9th, 2024, at 1.01 p.m., 
my time here in Illinois, the gospel, you know, this dispensation by grace through faith. Okay? That's this dispensation. And he said unto them, Go ye in, into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What gospel? See, now, okay, the kingdom of heaven, that, 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 that passed. Okay? That passed. They blew it. The kingdom of God, spiritual, though, was still being first presented unto the Hebraic Jews, but then when Jewry in its entirety forego that in Acts chapter 7 with the stoning of Stephen, then us Gentiles, who from the beginning, you read about this in Isaiah, we were supposed to be grafted in, what, to make the Jew jealous, okay? And the Hebraic Jews are not jealous of the divided Christ of Christianity. They're not, okay? They're not, all right? So, that burial and resurrection happened. So, what gospel is it that they are going to go preach? Just believe and receive? No. No. Christ died, buried, and rose again. Third day according to the scriptures. He shed his blood on the cross for us. For the atonement of our sins. Okay? That's, that, that's some pretty glad tidings. And the fact that us Gentiles, us Gentiles, were grafted in. But, okay, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. We cover this in the baptism video, okay? It was a thing of identification, okay? Uh, we're, we don't have the time to get into that. It's been answered for you in the description box, the baptism video, okay? Baptism doesn't save you. Okay, at least the one by water doesn't. Okay? All right. All right, we, we answer this already, so I'm not going to get off on this. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. The Jews require a sign. The Hebraic Jews. The Jews require a sign. But the Greeks seek after wisdom. The Jews require a sign. I'm not a Jew. Okay? I'm not. I'm Japhethian. Okay? In my name shall they cast out devils, referring unto the sign gifts. They shall speak with new tongues. You read about that in Acts chapter 2. There were no Gentiles present in Acts chapter 2. The tongues video will also be in the description box refuting you wicked Pentecostal heretics. Okay? If they, okay, they shall take up serpents, Paul, a viper, bit him, then fall over dead, okay? And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Now, nowhere in Scripture do we, do, to my knowledge, um, you do in the Apocrypha, though, but the Apocrypha is not Scripture, okay? But in, um, in the Scripture, we don't have a record of someone drinking a cup of poison. But in Ezekiel, it, uh, the Lord says about how the uh, people have, certain people have fouled the waters with their feet. Okay? Living waters. The scripture is like water, likened unto water, likened unto milk. Okay? Sustenance. So if we drink any, uh, where, where is that? And if they drink any deadly thing, okay, deadly. For example, reading something that isn't scripture won't hurt us. Why? Because we're sealed with the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, and we have his word, okay? There are these touched individuals down south here in Mecca. Um, I've, I've seen the videos of these Pentecostal snake handler guys who handle and jump around with all this horrible 
music going on, if you want to call it that, and people singing and blah, 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 but handling snakes, venomous, poisonous snakes, okay? Handling them. And the one video, um, uh, guy, guys from down south, where they, 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 they barely, they, 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 okay? No, hey, no offense to my southern brethren. Make fun of me being a Yankee all day. I don't care, okay? But in one of the videos I saw, they had a mason jar, which I thought, all right, I got moonshine, right? The people tested the jar. You saw them take the jar, and it was actual strychnine. And the one guy, I believe in handling snakes and drinking strychnine. And they come to this. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And to my recollection, someone, if I'm wrong, give me the verse in the comment section of someone in Scripture drinking something poisonous. Put it in the comment section. I'll pin it. Okay? The, the, the Apocrypha is not Scripture, so the Lord rebuke you. Okay? But they come to this. And for your information... Strychnine in little increments, your body, even though strychnine is a deadly poison, your body can develop an immunity to it. It can. Just like taking uh, snake venom to protect you against certain uh, other things, like electrical currents and stuff like that, taking up things to build up your immunity, okay? Um, you know, you heard about uh, certain guys, uh, if you ever watch any of these detective things, about people poisoning people with um, uh, uh, um, fluid, uh, radiation, not radiation, radiator fluid, you know, the green stuff that ain't Kool-Aid, but had a sugary sweet taste, and they did it in small increments, and their body, they get sick, but their body builds up a tolerance to it, Okay. I mean, if I, I'm not going to look for it, but you can find the snake handler guys drinking strict. It's horrifying. And I, well, how many times have you been bitten? Quite a few. You, your body, which God created out of dirt, the greatest machine on earth. It's nothing that man makes, but what God made. The body of man. Okay? Did I say human body? Here. If I did, excuse me. Okay, you don't want to be a human. <laughs> you want nothing to do with human. Okay, that that I will put this one in the description in the description box. But but the body of mankind is the greatest machine. And we're not machines. We're not robots. But it is the greatest thing God created. Okay? So you can't build up a tolerance to that stuff if you find those snake handler things, okay? What I'm getting at, it's nothing that has to do with the Lord, okay? They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Those are all sign gifts for the Hebraic Jews, which eventually died off with the dying of the apostles, Okay? Why? Because the Jews require a sign. Okay? Now, 1 Corinthians, now look, uh, Matthew, uh, Mark 16, verse 15, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The gospel of the kingdom of heaven? No. The gospel of the kingdom of God? Spiritual? Now, in this dispensation, it is finished. Okay? Our faith is on Christ. In that it is finished. Okay? Alright? But what gospel? Gospel of the kingdom of heaven? No. What gospel? Just believe and receive? Uh, no. The devils also believe and tremble. Okay? Now you're going to like this. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Now see, here, here's... Here's where we're going to get, here's where I'm going to really want to irritate you, free gracers. Because this is what you guys do. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. Paul right here declares what he's about to say, the gospel. Is this the extent of it? No. This is a good start. 
But you know what these guys, well, let's read this, okay? Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain, like the antinomianist free grace are it. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. What do you, A, free grace, or what do you say? What's, what do they say? There's no blood in it! Now, okay, okay. Now, is there mention of blood from verses 1 to verse 4? No, there isn't. But you know, okay, okay, hey, you want mention of blood, huh? Okay, okay, how about this? How about we go to Romans chapter 5? How about we go to Romans chapter 5? You idiot. You filth. See, this is what they do, people. They go to, uh, for, to refute that this is the gospel or a good start to declare the gospel. What do they say? There's no blood in it. There's no blood in that gospel. Well, yeah, from verse 1 to verse 4, you're right. But see, we have a book, pal. We have a book that we are supposed to study, that we are to rightly divide, that we are supposed to search daily. We are to compare Scripture with Scripture. You're right. Blood isn't mentioned in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. So does that negate it being a declaration? Of what the gospel is as a definition, there is more to it. Yes, Romans five, Romans five. You want your blood? Romans five, verse nine. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. Hmm. But in that verse, there's no, there's no uh, death, burial, resurrection. There's no cross. Read the context. With the context. Oh, see, there, see, see. Oh, okay, okay, you want more blood? Okay, okay. But Brad, that's not first God. Two, you compare Scripture with Scripture. This is what these guys do. They, they strain it in that, and they swallow Kim. They strain at this one thing, and ignoring the rest of the context. Okay? And they can get away with this because they, like you, are lazy. <gasps> you heard me right. If you're willing to believe the garbage that the antinomianist, the Catholic, gives to you, and just believe it without even searching yourself, comparing Scripture with Scripture, <laughs> two peas in a pod, okay? Roll up another one, buddy. Okay, but more blood. Let's let's give you want more blood? Let's 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 give you a little bit more blood, huh? You want more blood? Huh? Ephesians 1, verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. But that's not in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. No, it isn't. But see, that's not where you just stop. You don't just throw that out and ignore other scriptures. Like you free gracers do. That's why they, they group everything around uh, Romans 3, what, 23 through 26. And they, they, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. But what leads up to that? They don't like that. They don't like that. And they call that heresy. Because what's before that? The why before that answer. It's, it's this. And, and, and you don't like that. Okay? You don't like that. No, you don't. Colossians. Colossians 1, verse 14. Okay? In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. There's some blood for you. Okay? Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Okay? 
11 on to 14. But Christ, being come, and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, uh, the church buildings, okay? Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once Catholic into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, capital S, offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Okay? Okay? Oh, we're not done. We ain't done. We ain't done. I, I, first John. First John. Chapter 1. Verse 7 out of 10. But if we walk in the light, and Christ is the light, as he is in the light, ditto, we have fellowship one another, with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Lost people, I'm not a sinner. I don't believe in sin. <laughs> Good for you. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, both saved and lost. See, once we are saved, we are sealed. But we can sin. And, you know, it's like, Lord, I'm sorry I did that today. You know, you don't lose your salvation. Of course not, because it's not yours to lose. But, you know, when you have sin as a saint, that can really mess up your relationship with the Father. Okay. All right. Verse 15 or verse 10. Okay. Well, let's read verse 9 again. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse 10. If we say that we have not sinned, I don't sin anymore. Sinless perfection. Sinless perfection. Yeah. I don't sin anymore. You got to stop sinning. When free gracers can refute a doctrine such as sinless perfectionism, that ought to tell you how horrifically bad sinless perfection doctrine is. When something as horrible and as disgusting and as satanic as free grace theology is can refute that, that what does that tell you about the sinless perfection thing? But... If we say we have not sinned, I don't sin anymore. We make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Okay? All right? But see, see, here's the thing. The free gracers don't encourage this. What? 2 Timothy 2, verse 15 uh, and 16. Study. To shew thyself approved unto God. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Oh. My wife and I collect, I, uh, we both spend quite a bit of time, hours, in scripture every morning. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just saying. Uh, my feet get moving. I want my coffee. I, my got to go brush my teeth. And, but no. No, just Lord, <laughs> help. <laughs> okay. That takes work. And it's not works to be saved, you idiot. No, study is a labor. Okay, much study is a weariness of the flesh. Okay. And because it is, the devil comes in with somebody who just gives you uh, like three scriptures and doesn't even bother to compare scripture with scripture. Except to try to deceive you, I should say. Okay? But rightly dividing, you know, salvation changes within the dispensation. Okay? Study is a labor on your part. Okay? Yes, God, you know, will guide you into all truth. Yes, he can. But see, he's given us his completed word, his full word, his perfect and errant, given by inspiration word, the authorized version of the scriptures. And here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept, okay? We're supposed to study his word, okay? The authorized version. 
Why? A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Salvation changes within the dispensation. Grace is there every dispensation. Hence, when you hear free grace or say rightly dividing, what are they telling you? They're saying, well, his grace changes. His grace is there. Grace, unmerited favor. The better, blessing the lesser. That's there every dispensation. If it wasn't, we wouldn't be here. No, salvation, the way a man is made right with God and or saved is what changes in the dispensation. And see, if you don't rightly divide the word of truth, God's ashamed of you. Most, if not all, if not all of Christianity, God is ashamed of the divided body of Christianity. And you want to be a Christian? Oh, bravo, buddy. <laughs> bravo. Yeah. But shun profane and vain babblings. For they will increase on the more ungodliness. And see, this is what we, like, like we just did. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, you're right, doesn't have any mention of blood. And that's what they, it doesn't mention blood! Dude, that's, that's not all. I, we, we, I just showed you. I showed, we just did it. Okay? See, the totality of Scripture. They are the ones who cherry pick. And because they do that, and they don't encourage you. Okay? I, I haven't heard. Uh, I, that, 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 you know, sweetheart up there, he, he's a talk show host. But the other guys that I've listened to, no encouragement to, you know, do this yourself. Read yourself. No, why? Because they're entertainers. Okay? They're for entertainment, man. Okay? Um, Acts 17. Acts 17. And if they went jerk the blokes, they, they were lost. Uh, they had more sense to search the scriptures than you do. Okay? What, and, and who says something like that? Someone who is lost. Acts 17, 10 and 11. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those of Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. Received the word is imperative. It's like, okay, I want to believe that. I want that. How do I know it's true? And search the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Ah. See, what these guys do, your faith is in your faith. So your faith is in you. In your heart, God knows my heart. And what say the scripture? He who trusted in his own heart is a fool. And a fool says in his heart, there is no God except themselves. Okay? Woohoo! Okay? See, I, I tell you, don't believe what I'm telling you. You, you. you believe this, man. Believe this. You. You. Hey, sweetheart. You search the scriptures daily. Whether, they be, whether these things be so. Have you received the word with readiness of mind? I want to believe that. I, I really hope that's the truth. How do I know? Here. Where do I go? Well, well, let's start in Romans. That's the way to hell. Well, you, you shut up, Elmer. You're going there anytime soon. Okay? Here. Here. And well, they, they were lost. <laughs> they at least wanted to hear the truth. They wanted truth. And they were willing to do what it took. Searching the scriptures, see whether those things were so. And with Catholic, oh, Catholics, they tell you, don't read too much because you'll go into deception and you need their catechism, you need the uh, missile, you need all their other stuff. Anti, against and replace. So, what does Christianity do? Feeling. Trust in your own heart. I'm saved because I just believe. Catholic, the mother of all of them. Here's a cookie. Have a 
Like it ever. What do you want me? Here's some wine, okay? Hey, give us 10% of your income, okay? Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, you got to go talk to the Jesuit priest and tell him all the nasty things that are going on in your head. Yeah. Yeah, you got to do penance and flagellate yourself, okay? You got to say a, a hundred Hail Marys, main repetition. Huh? Replace. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you're black. Therefore, you're elect. You're a Hebrew. Hey, you met it. You're from England. You're one of the Brizraelites. <laughs> or you're a white supremacist. Point. Skin color, huh? Hey, I, I'm in church every day. I, when the doors are open. And, the, uh, and then they follow the same tenets of, as the Roman Catholic Church. Anti, against, and replace. What are they replacing it with? Ooh, cookie, abracadabra. I know this is water. Uh, wine, okay. Hey, your skin color. Hey, you're, you're at the church building. Hey, you save yourself by your own belief. I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. Okay, and also too, uh, when you when you run into one of these guys who says, "Well, it's by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden," it's by grace through faith uh, uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble. <laughs> and even the king, I I don't know how you guys are able to deceive people with the kingdom of heaven saying it's by grace through faith. I do because people are lazy. Okay, I get that, and you come along with just. Couple of verses, and that's all you need. And don't even bother to get into this. This is how they do it. But hey, Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hey, Jack. You know, in the Garden of Eden, they saw God. Knowing the kingdom of heaven, you're going to see God? Hmm? But what about when Christ was on the earth, Brad? He was there to fulfill the law. Okay? He was right there. But see, the faith while he was on the earth was in what? That he was who he said he was. God the Father, Son of David, King of the Jews. Yeah, that's the, we've already covered that. Okay? Yeah. It was not by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. It is not by grace through faith during the time of Jacob's trouble. That's what they're going to deceive you people who get left behind with. Okay? It's not by grace through faith. And see, here's the funny thing. By the time the kingdom of heaven comes around, the... God, the, the, this awful theology of just believe and receive will be long gone away with, especially with the destruction of the mother who created it, Rome. Okay, uh, th That won't be there by the time the actual kingdom of heaven is instituted. Okay, Because you're going to be able to see Christ on this throne. While we're in Hebrews 11, verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Unless you believe I am he, I am he, God the Father, ye shall die in your sins. And when he said that, you know, before the death, burial, and resurrection, that he was the Messiah, he is the Messiah, son of David, king of the Jews, king of kings, lord of lords, okay? But, but without, what is that? What is that? Get on my finger, okay? But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Searching the scriptures daily. Instruction and righteousness right there. Whether these things be so. But see, most people, especially when it comes to, uh, to spiritual things, and see, the tie-in with the, the uh, Jesuit-trained cemeterians 
who go to a college and get a hundred thousand dollar piece of paper on their wall, and people are like, ah, ooh, ah, and their mouth drops in awe because somebody's been trained by the Jesuits and yet have God said. Because people have been programmed that without a college education from Rome, you don't know nothing. And hey, you can't, I mean, a, a good, decent paying job, you need a college education for. Okay? You need a good enough diploma for. Okay? You need a, uh, you need a license now, at least in Illinois, McHenry County, to, uh, to flip a burger at, bur at whoa, McDonald's. You do. You need a food handler's license. The mentality is that you got to be approved of man and boast of your accomplishments. Okay? And because of that training from Rome instilled upon the populace of any nation under heaven, what happens? Someone comes along talking, well, the, the Greek, the oldest and the best, Brother Alexander B. Hartley, the oldest and best. Best. Beautiful. Okay? But these guys come along preaching that with their yay have guys up. Well, the Greek, the better translation. And you guys who have been brought up in this, that Gen Z and this Gen Alpha guy, these guys, oh. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I, uh, um, I, I encountered a young man who is one of these uh, Gen Z or whatever who changed the you know meaning of words. It, it's quite impressive. Might do a video about that, might not. But, um, you know, a kid, you know, he, he wasn't even, uh, he wasn't even saying to be a Christian. He's like, well, the oldest and best. Oh, really, kid? Little oh, boy. Remind me of talking to one of those 12-year-old, <laughs> uh, uh, what are the Mormons, a uh, 12 year old Mormon elder. Oh, I, I made that one kid that mad one day. Hey, you know, you're an elder. You're 12 years old, boy, and you're an elder. Oh, he didn't like that. <laughs> and unfortunately, I got a little uppity with him. I, I kind of I weighed him, I think, by 100 pounds. <laughs> but, hey, that, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But I mean, yeah. But see, it's that mentality. And see, when you are ingrained, taught in that mentality, Someone comes along with one of those pieces of paper. Dependence breeds subservience. And you're dependent, you have been taught to be dependent on someone who goes through the ringer of the Jesuit order, comes out with a piece of paper. Therefore, dependence breeds subservience. Proverbs 6, Proverbs 6, Proverbs 6, this is a detour, yes, Proverbs 6, <coughs> 4 on to verse 11, give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids, deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter, you know the one in England, Jesuit provincial, <coughs> Uh, I'm sad. <clears throat> Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. What are we reading to verse 11? Go to the ant, the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, well, the Bereans were lost. But yet, what did they do? They received the word with readiness of mind. That's what somebody else said, that they were all lost. But yet, they received the word. They wanted to believe it. but And they put in the effort to what? Search the scriptures daily, whether these things were so. Okay? Provideth her meat in summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? A little sleep. A little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. And there you go, you know, just sitting there asleep, being fed one verse, three verses, and occasional this and that, but no comparing Scripture with Scripture. 
Proverbs 19, just one verse. Proverbs 19, 15. Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. It's time that you should wake up out of your sleep. That will be in the description box along with a let us reason together, okay? All right, and uh, Proverbs 24, 30, on to verse 34, to the close. I went by the field of the slothful, by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And unto man he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So, guy went by a sloth, a dude who was slothful in his vineyard, and his vineyard, because, and he was what? Void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and net holes had covered the face thereof. Thorns go, grow up and ah, choke the word that had become unfruitful. Thorns and nettles, things of the world. And the stone wall thereof was broken down. Stone wall. Uh, no other foundation can any man lay but that which is laid. Okay? Then I saw and considered it. I considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. So I just mentioned there, everybody. Okay? And uh, Proverbs 26. 13 on verse 16. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. There's more hope of an atheist than usually with a Catholic and an antinomianist. Like I told you, a Catholic who thinks they know something about Scripture, that, that's, that's dangerous. That's full of wonder. You know, I, you know I've, I've run into a couple, quite a few, who think they know something about Scripture. And it's like, the Lord's like, Brad, you're wasting your time. <laughs> no, you are. <laughs> it's like, we serve, no, we don't serve the same God. You serve Satan. Well, the church, oh boy, here we go. Well, the, oh boy. The slothful man saith, there's a lion in the way. A lion is in the streets, afraid to do something. As the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. While Christianity lulls you to sleep with her vials. Ooh, the music video, that'd be a good one for this. Okay. All right. The slothful hideth his hand in the bosom, like the hidden hand of the masons. It grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth. The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. I say because I just believe. I've gone to church. I've done the cookie. Dude, that, here, here. Let me, can, can I reason with you? <laughs> Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There's more hope of a fool than of him. I'd have more of a chance of witnessing to Dade Murphy than trying to witness to most Catholics or even an antinomianist free gracer. Christians that are in the buildings. You can do it. The Lord will open doors. Yes, he will. But you know, sometimes you're going to get more. It's like, you know, look at Jesus. He went to the publicans and sinners. The ones who should have known, even and they had the scriptures, they did. Ones who ought to know, don't want to know. And the ones who want something better, but have been deceived by what Christianity is, you have more hope of them than with the religious. You really do. You really do. 
Because this thing, man, this cuts you like a knife, man. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing to the dividing of uh, spirit and soul and bones and marrow. That's the person. Okay? All right? Now, because of that, like I said, because you people have been trained to be lazy and to trust these guys who just give you these three things and they don't search scripture with scripture. That's how they're getting away with it. That's how you're getting away with it, and you guys know it. But now, let's get back on track. Let's go to Luke. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Okay? Luke chapter 4, verses 18 on to verse 19. Gospel again. We're back on track. I had to, had to touch that. Luke chapter 4, verses 18 on to verse 19. The capital S Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. What gospel? They didn't know about the death, burial, and resurrection. We're, we're going to touch on that in, coming up here soon. Okay? But they didn't know about it before it happened. So what gospel was it? The kingdom of heaven. And the gospel of uh, the kingdom of God, the spiritual aspect of that is, there's God the Father, there's the Son of David. That's what their faith was supposed to be in before the death, burial, and resurrection when the Lord Jesus Christ was walking on the earth. Okay? They, they needed to believe that he was the Father. And when he called himself the Father, they wanted to kill him. So they didn't believe him. Spirit of the Lord, capital S, is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. What gospel? Would that no, hadn't happened yet. Okay? <laughs> it hadn't happened yet. Okay? Luke 7. Luke 7, 22 unto 23. Jesus, then Jesus answering them, answering said unto them, Go your ways, and tell John what things ye, we've already covered this, what ye have seen and heard, how the blind see and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. What gospel? Before the death, burial, and resurrection, kingdom of heaven, Here's the aspect now of the kingdom of God, the spiritual aspect. And blessed is he who shall, whosoever shall not be offended in me. That's how those work like peas and carrots. The gospel was the kingdom of heaven. The gospel, the kingdom of God, spiritual, there's God. There's the Father. There's the Mashiach. Right there. There's the Son of David. That, they... The Hebraic Jews needed to believe on him as the Mashiach. Some did. The majority Jewry didn't. Okay? All right? Okay? Luke 9. Luke 9, 306. And he said unto them, Take nothing for your journey, Neither staves or scrip. Neither bread, neither money, neither have two coats apiece. Whatsoever house ye enter into, there abide, and thence depart. And whosoever will not receive you, when ye go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. And remember, the apostles were given sign gifts. Because the Jews require a sign. You know, the feeding of 5,000 that the Lord did, the, them fishies and bread, dude, were like miraculously appearing out of thin air. Okay? All right? So, okay, come on. And they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Which gospel? Death, no. No, it wasn't the death, burial, and resurrection. Gospel of the kingdom. Which kingdom? Kingdom of heaven. Well, what about the kingdom of God? They had to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, Son of David, the Mashiach, the Father, 
Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The fulfillment of Isaiah 9. Unto us the Son is born. God the Father. Okay? Peas and carrots. Okay? Dude, that's simple. That's simple. But see, you've got to search the Scriptures to whether these things be so. Do you want to believe that truth? Good. Praise the Lord. Here's where you go. And this, the scripture, will guide you to the Father. The Jesus Christ who is. Not that stupid. One God in three. <laughs> not one God in three persons. That's heresy. One God. Comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Take a fence. Take a gate, boy. Okay? Now, where are we? Where are we? I, I, just lost my, I just lost my place. Luke 20. Luke 20. Luke 20, verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass on one of those days as he taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel. The chief priests and the scribes came upon him with the elders and spake unto him, saying, Tell us, by what authority dost thou these things? And who is he that gave thee this authority? What gospel was he preaching? I'm the son of David. I'm God the Father. I'm offering you the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven cannot be there without the son of David. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Now something happened. That little death, burial, and resurrection the blood shed on the cross. Okay, and as we have demonstrated, you're right, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, there's no blood there. Dude, compare scripture with scripture. You don't just stay in one spot. We, we, got, we, got, a, we got a lot of stuff that we could go through. But see, what does that show you? Spiritual laziness. Of those who don't want to take the effort. Those who don't want to labor in the word. Because much study is awareness of the flesh. And we are to study. Show ourselves approved unto God. This is not talking about salvation. If you come the way of the cross. The Lord saves you. You're sealed. Okay. Alright. We are to study what? His word and rightly divide it. Which Christianity doesn't encourage. They don't. They don't. They're one man shows. Aren't they? But see, something happened. Something happened. The death, burial, and resurrection. That, that's them good tidings, man. That's good tidings. A Acts 8, one verse. 25. Acts 8. 25. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. Ah. Gospel. What gospel? Death, burial, and resurrection happened. The blood was shed. Okay? Shut up! Shut up! The Lord rebuke you. There are other verses and scriptures that you go to to equate the blood with the death, burial, and resurrection, you idiot. Okay? Okay? Give me a break. But this is significant. This is significant. Why? Why? Because it was to the Jew first. He came preaching what? Okay? The kingdom of heaven. The Mashiach, okay? But see, before the death, burial, and resurrection, he was preaching the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. After the death, burial, and resurrection, the kingdom of God, purely spiritual, after the death, burial, and resurrection, okay? Savior, 
our God, our Father. It is finished. Okay? It is finished. Okay? So it went from the Hebraic Jews having faith that He is their King, God the Father, to it is finished. The death, burial, and resurrection, the blood shed on the cross on Christ who paid for my sins. Okay? What happened? The death, burial, and resurrection. Because at first, at first, Matthew 15, Matthew 15, Matthew 15, verses 24 to 26. But he answered and said, this is Jesus speaking, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, then came she, uh, a woman who was not a Hebraic Jew, and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. You heard him right. You heard him right. But see, what happened? What happened? Romans 11. Romans 11. Jewry rejected kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Okay? Now don't be confused with that. The kingdom of God before the death, burial, and resurrection, we already explained. He's the Messiah, son of David. That's what their faith was to be in. Not in the death, burial, and resurrection. The death, burial, and resurrection happen. <laughs> okay? It's not just believe and receive. Okay? See, that alone, just believe and receive, the object is on you, not the Lord, not what he did, but there's no blood in that. Romans 11, verse 11, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall, meaning the Hebraic Jews, God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles, for what? To provoke them, the Hebraic Jews, to jealousy. And that's talked about prophesied in Isaiah. Okay? Already there. But fulfilled in this. That what? We were grafted in to make them jealous. And, okay, trust me when I tell you this. I've witnessed to many Hebraic Jews. I've talked with them, many Hebraic Jews. The Hebraic Jews, number one, they want to be referred to as Messianic Jews. Good. Why? Because the Hebraic Jew equates Christian with the crusaders and the crosses on their tunics, with the Catholic priest or the priest or whatever who would poke them, the uh, rabbis, when the Catholics were trying to convert them and the rabbis would fall asleep, they would poke them to keep them awake. Okay? So the Hebraic Jews who believe on their Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, they want to be called Messianic Jews. Good for them. But, people, the body of this Christianity is divided. Anyone can see that. But yet Scripture says, is Christ divided? No, he isn't. So something right here. Either Christianity is wrong or Scripture is wrong. I'll let you figure that one out. Because anyone, anyone, well, I'm a Christian. Well, what are you? I'm a Christian. Well, uh, well I'm a Bible believer. That's just, that is just now another denomination. Bravo. Okay? I'm a King James Bible believing Christian. Another denomination of a divided body. The Hebraic Jews are not jealous of Christianity. They're not. They're not. Especially these ones that go, you know, oh, I have Jews who are best friends. That's tacky and gross. Not that you have a Hebraic Jew as a friend, but that they per, that they put it to you in that fashion. And you ask a Catholic, what do you think of the Jews? We don't. <laughs> they don't. 
because, you know, replacement theology, which will be in the description box for you. Um, they, Rome teaches you that they've replaced the church. But, and while we're in Romans 11, verses 28 on to 29, as concerning the gospel, what gospel? Believe and receive. That's no. The death, burial, and resurrection. There's no blood in that. We just went through several verses about the blood. You you don't just fix yourself on that set of verses. You add more verses to it. Scripture with scripture. As concerning the gospel, there are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the uh, Father's sakes. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Now, in this context, election is talking about the apple of his eye, the Hebraic Jew. And we've been grafted into their tree. See, okay? And ultimately, now, before the death, burial, and resurrection, the kingdom of heaven, with son of David on the throne, the faith was in the son of David, that he is who he says he was. Okay? Offering them the kingdom of heaven. That was the gospel for the death, burial, and resurrection. Kingdom of God that is preached today is in what? Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3. They did not know about the death, burial, and resurrection before it happened. They did. Ephesians 3, 1 to 6. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. What does that mean? Before it happened, they didn't know about the death, burial, and resurrection. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Just believe and receive? No. Now it is that Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That he shed his blood on the cross to make atonement for my sins. That's that, that very simple. Acts 15. Acts 15. Acts 15. Okay? Acts 15. Come on, fingers, work with me. Acts 15. Verses 6 unto 11. Acts 15, 6 unto 11. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider this matter. What matter? That saints save people have to keep the law of Moses. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. What gospel? The death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? And God which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And put no difference, unless you're, you know, a uh, Calvinist or, or Pentecostal or Catholic or whatever. Stupid. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we could bear? Meaning no one can keep the law perfectly. Only God, manifest in the flesh, could do it. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. And, of course, after the Jerusalem conference, all preaching what was revealed on the Paul. Very simple. Acts 20. Acts 20. Verses 24 on to 25. But none of these... Uh, am I in the right place? Yes, I am. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might 
finish my course with joy and the ministry. Wait a minute. Am I reading the right one? One moment. Sorry, sorry. Yes, I am. I just keep reading, Brad. <laughs> but none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself. So that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify of the gospel of the grace of God, unmerited favor bestowed by the less of the better unto us the lesser. What is that favor? What is that grace? Christ is the propitiation for our sins, that he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he shed his blood on the cross. See, you saying, well, there's no blood in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. You're right. But see, you don't stop there. You compare scripture with scripture. Okay? <laughs> and now, behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, spiritual, Okay? In Him as Savior, God the Father, it is finished. Where before the death, burial, and resurrection, onto the Hebraic Jews, Son of David. See? What changed? God doesn't change. But the dispensation changed. How man is made right with God. God doesn't change. But the way He deals with us, mankind, that's what changes. Grace is there in every dispensation. Or again, we go up like a puff, okay? And now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Romans 1, 15 and 16. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome. Believe and receive? No. No. That Christ died, buried, and rose again, third day according to the scriptures. It's a good start. But you go to other places to show that blood by his blood, too. Okay? Yeah. You, other scriptures. There's not, you just don't stay in one place. You go on to other scriptures. With scripture with scripture. That takes work. That takes labor. That you got to do. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Just believe and receive? No. That Christ died, buried, and rose again. Third day according to the scriptures. That he shed his blood on the cross. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. Oh! Oh, and here, let's, uh, uh, Romans 10. <laughs> Romans 10. 14 on verse 17. The, the free gracer would be like, they, 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 they don't deal with verse 14 because Here's what they do. They, they focus in on the part and fact that the word believed is there. But they ignore the context around the one verse, the one word in that verse. Same thing when they say the true gospel is Romans 3, 23 on the 20. What comes before that? Why? 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 See, it's what they're leaving out. That's the answer. Yes, it is. That is truth. But see, it's what they're leaving out. To them, prayer is a work. Calling on the name of the Lord is a work. Okay? Okay? <laughs> Repentance is a work. Well, no, it's actually going from uncle. It's, shut up! And then it's like, well, where do you start? You want to tell someone the gospel. You go to 1 Corinthians 15, one of our, there's no blood there. It's not funny. It's laughable. <clears throat> but they like to, you know, they say they don't deal with verse 14. 
Listen. How then shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? See, it's just belief. Con dude, context. What is this talking about? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they how shall they hear without a preacher? Verse 14 is setting you up to tell you about those of us who have been called to preach the gospel. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, told you earlier, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by thee. Word of God. You know, another one of these things that some of these jerks do, they'll say stuff to you like, well, repentance, repent, is not mentioned in the Gospel of John. It's the same mentality. Blood isn't mentioned in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. No, you go elsewhere. But they say, you know, well, repentance isn't are mentioned in the Gospel of John, or whatever they say. But it's mentioned elsewhere. Like unto the same, being born again. Paul never mentions it. Only, you know, uh, uh, Jesus and Peter, so it's just for the Jews. You're right, he never said born again. He defined it. See, that that's the mentality. Straining at a gnat and swallowing the camel. Straining at the gnat, just cherry picking one thing and you're swallowing swallowing the camel of their heresy. Check this out. Gospel. Check it out. Check it out. Gospel doesn't appear in the book of John either. Fact check me. Go right ahead. Well, I guess because it doesn't say in the book of John, right? That's, see, in order to defend the heresy, that's what these guys do. Repentance isn't mentioned in the book of John. Okay, it's mentioned elsewhere. You compare scripture with scripture. The gospel isn't in the book of John. It's not in the book of James. The book of James is written on to who? The 12 tribes. Okay? So what? The, I guess that, that, that means that there's no gospel, right? You know where gospel isn't also mentioned? In 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. Gospels doesn't appear in Scripture. Gospel doesn't. <laughs> Gospeling. Gospel. Singular. Meaning that there's only one according to the dispensation. And unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. The government, the kingdom of heaven. Death, burial, and resurrection, bloodshed on the cross, it is finished. Jesus is God the Father. He is the blessed hope. He is our redemption. He is our life. He is our hope. See, yo, lazy. Hey, Catholics, they, they go to their church building, they do, they flagellate themselves, they go wash cars with their children who look like whores dressing in short shorts, uh, they do these potluck dinners or whatever, they're at the, hey, they're at the uh, phallus house every time the doors are open, right? Right? Hey, the devils are with their fingers on the computers, right? They're active. But they're spiritually lazy. Why? Isaiah 30, 9 on 11. 
that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Oh, someone who's lost who will suddenly come up to you and start smoozing you. I want to believe as you do, right? Be careful. Anyway, be careful. Which say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy to see. How smooth is it, man? Just believe and receive. <laughs> it's not funny. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from us. The one who is. Well, Satan through his daughters, through the daughters of Rome, the whore, give you another Jesus and another gospel. <laughs> 2 Timothy 4, 1 on the 4. 2 Timothy 1 on the 4. 2 Timothy 4, 1 on the 4. Prophesy, you want to hear smooth things. You don't want to put the labor in the search in the scriptures. Will these things be so? I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. You want to hear, just believe and receive. You want to hear, hey, eat a cookie. <laughs> Wash it down with some poison. Okay? And you'll be fine. Okay? You want to hear that you're special because of the color of your skin. You want to hear that you're uh, saved, special because you speak like blah, 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 or something like that. You want to hear because you're going to a phallus house. You're showing your dedication to the Lord by being at a building. Having your ears itch. And of course, what Jesus are they offering you? One God and three blah, persons. God who's not angry, a God who loves you. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Galatians 1. Galatians 1. Verses 6 on to verse 12. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Which is not another. There's only one gospel. Believe and receive is not the gospel, you twit. You devil. Okay? But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. That's what free gracers do. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Hey, you Catholics, you uh, free graces, sweetie pie, Pentecostals, huh? black Hebrew Israelites, you Calvinists, some of you Baptists, not all. I ain't even going to mention the Methodists and the Presbyterians and the Episcopalians. Preaching another gospel and another Jesus. Let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Just believe me, see. Have a cookie. Hey, your skin color, huh? Ah, oh, you're at the church every day. And the doors are open, right? You speak in tongues, right? 
Or do I seek, for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? God's not angry at you. God loves you unconditionally, even though you reject him. Yeah, he's going to send you to hell, but he loves you. For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Easy believism is a man-pleasing gospel, which has no chastening, no chafing of you. Does this offend you? Good. Before the gospel, before it can become a glory unto you, it has to be an offense first. Before, it, before you can be healed, you need to be broken. Before you can be fixed, you need to be broken. Before you can be born again, something has to die. Not with, hey, hey, Catholicism here, man. Have a cookie. <laughs> Have a cookie. Don't eat that cookie. Okay. But I certify you, brethren, the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Yeah, because the gospel that is is not the gospel that Christianity preaches. They claim they do, but what they say and what they produce are two different things. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So, gospel, Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Shed his blood on the cross. Okay? 1 Corinthians 15, that's not it in its entirety. But that's just it. That's where you start. Well, there's no blood there. Uh, then you talk about the cleansing blood, saved by the blood of the crucified one, and the indwelling of the Holy Ghost when you go the way of the cross, okay? See, th there's, there's more to it. And these guys just have to offer you just a little shot in the arm, and then that's it. And then go on living as a devil. Again, um, I really find no problem with the gospel being equated as glad tidings because we saw at the beginning of this video salvation mixed in with glad tidings good tidings um, good news only one appearance um, cold, uh, cold waters for a thirsty soul from a far country the tie-ins there you can go off on for a while but in the actual verse itself, there's no tie-in with the gospel. But see, the comparing scripture with scripture, which they don't do, guys. Come. You need to wake up out of your sleep. Let us reason together, you and I. Okay? That's going to be it for this video. Okay? Thank you very much for watching this, if you do. Um, if you're saved, um, I hope, you know, if you're a saint, I hope this helps and whatever. If you're lost, if you're a Christian, and you see this and you're offended, good! Good! Maybe you'll use that, that brain of yours, you know, that lump that's three foot above your buttocks, okay? Maybe you'll be a little bit more diligent to search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Because your spiritual laziness being willing to be spoon fed by a guy who was trained by the Jesuits. But has got the, the glowing piece of paper on his wall. Take fence in the gate, boy. Now, um, i got to mention too, um, we got, uh, we have been given a gift um, to do some, <laughs> we got a, we got a, we got an old dog who can't hold her water. Uh, so we got, I got some deep cleaning that's going to have to take place, do this tomorrow. But 
I don't know if I'll be getting to a video on Friday. I don't know. It's not up to me. I'm just letting you know. If one doesn't come, realize, brethren, that there's we got stuff going on behind the scenes. Okay? There's some things we got to do, take care of here that might be a little time consuming just to let you know. Okay? But then again, of course, uh, other things will be done, of course. Some of you may be aware what might of what I'm referring to of, but um, anyway, just so you know, okay? Thank you so much for watching this if you do. I love you. Please keep your servant in prayer. And we will see you in the next video.